Hello and welcome to the video on types of hypersensitivity reactions. A hypersensitivity reaction is an altered immune response in which our immune system overreacts against either a foreign antigen or our own self antigens. Allergies and autoimmune conditions are considered hypersensitivity reactions. There are four types. Type 1 is IgE mediated and is typically associated with allergic reactions to antigens found in foods, drugs, pollen, dust, animal dander, molds, things like that. It doesn't always occur on the first exposure to the antigen. So what happens in this reaction is that a large amount of IgE antibodies are produced and then attached to mast cells and basophils. Those cells then begin degranulating, which releases short-acting mediators such as histamine, leukotrienes, and prostaglandins. This can cause both local and systemic effects. An extremely serious outcome of this hypersensitivity reaction is anaphylaxis. This is a life-threatening condition as it can lead to airway obstruction and vascular collapse. We will cover more on this topic in a later video. Other clinical manifestations of type 1 hypersensitivity can be considered atopic reactions. Atopic means being genetically predisposed to become hypersensitive to certain allergens. Some of these include allergic rhinitis, also known as hay fever, asthma, atopic dermatitis, urticaria, also known as hives, and angioedema. Hay fever is the most common and is primarily caused by airborne substances such as pollen, molds, and pet dander. Symptoms include itchy, watery eyes, sneezing, runny nose, with asthma, the patient typically has a history of eczema, allergic rhinitis, or food intolerances. It commonly manifests as dyspnea, or shortness of breath. It can also have wheezing, chest tightness, and coughing. Atopic dermatitis refers to chronic skin conditions, which involve generalized lesions. This can include vesicles, which are fluid-filled blisters, Hives are wheels that can happen quickly after allergen exposure due to histamine release. They can last for just a few minutes or hours. They can be varying degrees of pink in color as well as swollen and very itchy. Angioedema is similar to hives but it involves deeper layers of the skin and the submucosa. The skin can sometimes look erythematous but it can also look normal. The edema is non-pitting and can start suddenly or over the course of a few hours. It usually manifests first in the face and can progress to other parts of the body, including the airways. This condition can last for days. Type 2 hypersensitivity reaction involves cytotoxic and cytolytic processes and is associated with ABO incompatibility transfusion reactions. The antibodies IgM and IgG bind with red blood cell antigens, and this activates the complement system and enhances phagocytosis. If a patient has type A blood and they receive a transfusion from a donor who has type B blood, then a hemolytic reaction will take place. The recipient with type A blood has anti-B antibodies and those antibodies begin the immune response against the foreign blood cells. And this can lead to serious life-threatening complications. The autoimmune disease Good Pasture Syndrome is another example of type 2 hypersensitivity. In this case, IgG antibodies combine with tissue antigens, which activates the complement system. This leads to deposits of IgG forming in the lungs and kidneys. 
Type 3 hypersensitivity is mediated by immune complexes in which antigens combine with IgM and IgG to form very small complexes that phagocytes can't remove. Antigens from certain viruses, bacteria, and fungi can lead to this reaction. The complexes eventually deposit themselves in other areas of the body, which leads to inflammation and destruction of the affected tissues. The parts of the body mostly affected by this type are the kidneys, blood vessels, lungs, skin, and joints. And examples of this type of hypersensitivity include rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and glomerulonephritis. In type 4 hypersensitivity, no antibodies are involved. It's a cell-mediated response, also known as delayed hypersensitivity, as it takes 24 to 48 hours to occur. In this response, helper T cells overreact and overproduce cytokines, which leads to tissue inflammation and destruction by macrophages. Examples include transplant rejections, contact dermatitis, and microbial hypersensitivity, such as tuberculosis. In regard to the dermatitis, the main difference between type 4 and type 1 hypersensitivity is that this type is more localized and restricted to the area exposed to the allergen, whereas type 1 involves a more generalized, widespread amount of lesions. The delayed hypersensitivity reaction to tuberculosis is why TB skin tests are assessed 48 to 72 hours after the injection. So in review, type 1 involves IgE antibodies, is associated with airborne allergens. The main mediators are histamine, leukotrienes, and prostaglandins. Examples are anaphylaxis and various atopic reactions. Type 2 involves cytolytic and cytotoxic processes, the antibodies IgM and IgG, and the complement system. Examples include ABO and compatibility transfusion reactions, and good pasture syndrome. Type 3 is mediated by antigen antibody immune complexes. IgM and IgG are also involved here. Examples include lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and glomerulonephritis. Type 4 is a delayed hypersensitivity response. There are no antibodies involved. Instead, it has T cells, macrophages, and cytokines as the main components. Examples include TB skin testing, contact dermatitis, and transplant rejections. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, then hit subscribe for more videos that will help you succeed in nursing school. Have a fantastic day.